Figured out, Jay? Mm -hmm. You ready to go? Yep. Stiff decked, ready to rock and roll? Yep. Oh, I've I have one thing to honor Bob. What do you got? Oh, what are you gonna do? Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ, Shane first time on and he's fucking hitting the pen. Oh man, here we go. All right, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferosi, and I'm here with a guest. Kind of. Kind of. Big dicked Shane Healy. Say good morning. Good morning. Everybody fucking hates you already. It's going to be great. Going to be a good podcast. Mr. Bob is on vacation. Uh, He's enjoying time with his wife. I'm guaranteeing that they're probably having a lot of sex um, and enjoying life. Yeah. Bob, he fucks. Yeah. He does get down. For anybody that is curious about Bob, if there was one man that I could say that had a boner more than anybody on the fucking planet, Bob. Definitely. Yeah. 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 That's why he started running. Yeah. yeah, just so much fucking energy. Yeah. Just can't, can't work it off. Yeah. Throws a fucking energizer bunny legitimately. <laughs> 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 Revealing shit about Bob with him not here. This is so fun. <laughs> Bob's like, I, I do fuck. I do like it. Yeah. Yeah, who doesn't? And running everything on the podcast, fill in for Shaner, is Jay. Hello. Jay fucks too. Mm-hmm. Jay's getting married. He is. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's coming great, up soon. Great job. Mm-hmm. You excited? Yeah. You've been with Megan for how long? Thir- 13 years. God wow. damn. Think about it. It's been so long. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. It's good you're getting married. Yeah. It's exciting. Is it? Not really. <laughs> Nothing's going to fucking change. Except like expectations from and everything all of a sudden. Yeah. It's bullshit. Well, we w- we went on that bachelor party with uh, Zach and, and Jay and all the guys. And... Uh, Zach goes, uh, I have a word of advice. Don't fucking get married. It was like, dude, you're getting married in a month. Jay's getting married in almost two months. <laughs> yeah, it was like a back and forth thing between you and Zach. Uh, no, <laughs> Jay, pa- Jay used my line. He's like, congratulations. You're going to have one vagina for the rest of your life. Yeah. Good job. And Zach looks at me. He's like, bro, aren't you getting married like in two months? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. got to admit, Pat set me up for that one. He's like, he's like, all right, when we get there, he's like, you got to give like a 30 second speech. About how dumb getting married is. It's going to look awesome. <laughs> and then he's going to return the favor. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. Good times. Funny. Good times. No, but we have Shaner on the podcast this morning. You have, uh, you are a very integral part of this company. Not many people, you're like a mystery man. Nobody knows what you look like. This is the first time on camera. Yeah, it is. Does you feel okay? Yeah. First time yeah. on camera. You ever... I've had a couple movies before. No, I don't. Pe- ones that people haven't seen. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. You know, you've yeah. got a bunch of questions for you lined up. It's going to be an exciting time. I think there's a lot of people out there that are going to have a lot of questions. I'm going to ask them all. All right. But, um, no, this is, like I said, Bob's on vacation. And uh, we haven't done a podcast in a minute because we are busy as fuck here. We have a ton of shit going on. It is a little out of control. Oh, it's it's a lot. Yeah, you're yeah. on the back end of a lot yeah. of stuff. You yeah. Know, you're behind the scenes and... You kind of, you almost get a little bit abused here at work. A little bit. Like, not verbally. Verbally, you're fine. Yeah. Like, not physically. How, no. do, how do we abuse somebody who, like, what's a work use? Like, we overuse Shane, like, from your work capabilities? Yeah. Uh, not overuse. Uh, I'd say abuse is a good word. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, abuse is, <laughs> abuse good is a good word. Abuse is a good word. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny because I'm doing all the back end stuff, making sure that, like, you, you know, Jay and I with the content and, and all the systems work and everything. And then you guys are been locked away planning. Yes. Like, that's, it's just, it's just crazy the different parts of strategizing. We have a well oiled machine here. Um, the front end with Bob and I. And you over there and and what people see on the podcast and the image of the company and what we actually create here, the creative side of this, um, it's fucking crazy. People don't really – people – I'd probably say the one thing that I've learned with – bro, there's 38 people that work at this company now. It's unreal, and we need at least 10 more. We just need 10 skilled people and starting to get to the place where people – we need high-skilled people. Yeah. To help co- the company grow. And you've been here and you two have been here since the very beginning of this all. And um, but what I've learned is, is there are so many different aspects that chew up hours of your time, like just chew up long hours. It yep. is unreal. Like just from the standpoint, like what we're doing with labels, like labels yeah. for new products. It's not like, hey, I need you to design a label and it's going to be great. Like it's not a simple design. No, not at all. 
it go it, it's like okay we you need the design the name the design but then on top of that you need every single little tidbit of information from a legal standpoint from a uh what's the word i'm looking for but you need the concept art as well well the concept art and yeah then, that's and then yeah the, the legal stuff um nutrition facts working not, with the manufacturer it is just going through what Lydia's doing right now. I'm, yeah. I, it's fucking mind-blowing, oh, yeah. making sure that everything is right. And then on top of that, going international. We have things moving into Canada now. You need two languages. Yeah. So we're going to have to have everything that's on a label, all the sub-panels, all the nutrition facts, have to be in two languages now, English and French. All squeezed on one label. All squeezed on one label for seventh gear. Isn't there like conversions too? Like, cause yeah. they're metrics. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It's going to, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, even that, like it's, it's such a long drawn out process and the label has to fuck. You have to make people want to have to buy it if they've never seen it before. Yep. Yeah. And that's just labels. Yeah. That's not the formulas. That's not anything, but, um, yeah. So you can lose a day in a heart and a snap of the fingers. Yeah. It's, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to do And that. you pretty much integrate all the software systems that we have going on at this company, all of the logistics for mm-hmm. everything from uh, the per- when people show up on the website all the way to it making it to shipping and then the software for shipping to be for people to be able to track their shipments from us. Like from the time someone shows up on the website to the time that they receive it in their hands, you're heavily involved. Yep. It's kind of your fault if anything goes wrong. Definitely my fault. Yeah, definitely yeah. your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that, um, uh, with all that being said, if we're talking about the type of, just from a shipping standpoint, the mispicks that are involved here, we ship out thousands of orders a week. We don't ship out a thousand orders a week. We don't ship out two. We ship out a lot. Thousands mm-hmm. per week. What was it? Last week, we had Two mispicks. Two. Yep. Two mispicks last week out of thousands of orders. Yeah, and then AAR released before that. It, so it, triple the amount of orders, quadruple the amount of orders, and yes. still two. minimal. Yeah. We and but the thing is there are hiccups that happen, but whenever you're on the level of whenever you're shipping like on a on a release, on a release for AAR, we're looking at anywhere between seven and twelve thousand orders. And if you have, and if we're doing numbers and percentages for that release night, numbers and percentages, <laughs> less than less than a half a percent of mispicks yeah, or it's problems, yep. it's not a lot. Industry standards are way fucking higher. Yep. And let alone from a supplement standpoint with as many SKUs as we have now. So kudos to you. Thanks. Even though a lot of people say "fuck you" and you're a piece of shit, and all, maybe that's just me. <laughs> that's definitely you put it in everybody's head. <laughs> it's I'm in everybody's joking. head. But uh, no, it's it's crazy, and people wondering what you do. That is what you do. Yeah. All the software systems on the back end that are being built, uh, you are you uh, you and Mike and and Bob lead the way in that, yep. and they give you a shit ton of bitch work. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. It I'm really putting sucks. together a new program right now. Like it's... if there was a job I wouldn't want at this company. It'd be yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the I think the least the job I would least like to do at this company would probably be um I don't know, Man. that'd be pretty fun too. At least for a little bit. Maybe I should do everybody's job for a week here for a day here. That'd be fun. Mm. Except yours. I can't no. do your, what am I gonna do with your job? Like, hey, we what gotta... am I gonna do with you, Mike? <laughs> Bob? Hey, we have meetings for hey. four hours, and yeah. then you got to, like, send out, like, 15 emails. you got to send out emails. You have to integrate this system. You have yeah. to sit on, on this call for this software um, and then sit with Bob and Seth. You're going to design all these shirts. All right, on the computer. Yeah, we need all the art files built yeah. and made and sent over. And I'm like, hmm, I'm just going to sit here and kind of beat my deck. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work at all. Jay's like, okay, you're going to edit this video. Great. Needs done by this afternoon. Mm. So what am I doing here? What's this button do? <laughs> That's literally how I am. But I think the um, I'm not good at customer service because uh, yeah, I get a little emotional, mm-hmm. get a little tied up. So if I was doing customer service, I'd be like, fuck you. But then people would probably be like, Seth, what's up? It's okay. You fucked up. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make it right. It's going to get out to you. 
Cool. Great. Yeah, unfortunately, those things happen, but our, our customer service team does a really good job at, at handling those situations and so you play you play a a huge role here because of how involved you are with each one of us as owners Mm -hmm. being in this building here um it's like mike had said in the beginning like building a customer service team was the number one priority here yeah and now that we have carly as the customer service manager you work hand in hand with her making sure the experience here at whenever you show up onto our websites between you and carly People fucking dig it. Yeah. They love it. It's a great experience. You work hand in hand with the software developers and all the engineers making sure that we're able to run deals and things run smoother because they used to not run smooth. No, not at all. And then they costed lots of money to fix them. And and obviously, whenever you say something's fixed and then we try to break it and it breaks and then you're like, it's bulletproof. (laughs) No, it's not, you dickhead. Go back and fix it Every fucking time. Mike Mike doesn't believe me anymore. No, I don't believe you anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, this works. It's going to be great. They're going to be able to go on the website and do this and do this. And then we try to test it. And he's like, it doesn't fucking work. Nope. mm -mm. Like the five for a hundred. For everybody that doesn't know, that deal was my favorite deal. Like I was telling everybody, that's like my fucking shit. I was like the champ sports. We run it a couple times a year. It's awesome because everybody gets to get five t-shirts or five items, t-shirts or tank tops for a hundred bucks or you can't beat it. No. It's awesome. Sure. Do we lose our ass on a little bit of stuff? Yeah. The margins drop significantly. However, mm-hmm. in volume and, and what people do and how they, it's people wear them everywhere. They love it. It's the greatest deal you could run. And, and we prepare for it and make sure that we order inventory so that we, we do make a good margin. We are able to grow the company and make money. Yep. It's the whole point of a business. Um, but uh, that thing broke. There was issues almost every single fucking release except this past one. That's right. Look at Shane. They'll pump so up. Look how excited he is. We tried to test that. We broke that thing probably like five times before we tried. Spent a stupid amount of money <clears throat> on software mm-hmm. just to try and make it work. Yep. Yeah. And it worked. Bob, for I think it was like four years ago, three or four years ago, whenever I told Bob I wanted to do this. And he's like, all right. He did it. And then we did it. And then the fucking, uh, our site actually went down. Yep. And I'm like, bro, we're going to lose all this money. We're fucked. We don't have money to begin with. We invested it all in this fucking release. He got it back up and running, and then it all went. And uh, But apparently when people would go use PayPal, it, they would have five for 100. It would work on the site, and then they would leave and go to pay in a different way. Mm-hmm. And then the whole cart would – the the deal would empty. And then they'd have five shirts, but the five shirts would be at full price. And then they'd have to email customer service, which was Bob. So then he had to answer <laughs> – hundreds of emails and it, refund hundreds of people a little bit of a nightmare oh, yeah. yeah it's crazy how one thing that you change one thing and it affects everything else it, and other people that run companies know these things but a lot don't yeah so um now a little bit about you what people don't know is like we bro you you are an integral part here the back end of this company runs really well because of uh what we, how we have built this company like the people that we have in place, four owners that are speci- uh, specified into four different things that stay in their lanes, and you on what you do with Carly for the experience of the people to have at this company. Before this, what did you do? Where did you come from? <clears throat> you may start at the very beginning. I would like you to. <laughs> so Pat, the one owner, Pat Williams, uh, he is one of the owners here. Um, he used to work at, um, reaction was another, it was based here in Pittsburgh. They were a supplement company and manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's how Pat knows he's one of the best formulas in the formulators in the industry, knows the cost of everything, knows how, how manufacturers operate, know where the margins are, know how everything's made. He knows the ins and outs was doing it for 12 fucking years in manufacturing for 12 years. You do that shitty job for 12 years, you're going to be very experienced. And he's been in the industry for over 20 yep, or about, or about 20. Yeah. Something like it. So he's very experienced in the supplement industry. Hence why we are able to, uh, why we've been able to formulate great things and, and have good margins because we know how to formulate. Yeah. Leading it, uh, cutting edge products. So out of college, you played college baseball. I did. Okay. A little bit of an athlete. Yeah. You're a little cocky around here, too, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, tried to race me when I broke my fucking ankle, <laughs> yeah. you bastard. Yeah, that was funny. Um, <laughs> you got to get yeah, out of it. I did. Well, as soon as you posted it, you were like, oh, I'm, I'm laid up. And I'm like, hey, you want to race tomorrow? Yeah, race. <laughs> you and I, have, it's been the short people race around here. Yeah. 
Yeah. We can't, I can't hang with Jay. He's too quick. Is Jay fast? I don't know. Actually, I don't know if Jay's quick. He, I know he goes for distance. Yeah. yeah Jay I'm, goes for the distance. I'm tall and slow. Yeah. Mm, tall oh, and tall. slow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Full thrusts. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, or, or legs, whatever that is. <laughs> um, but you were a college baseball player. Yeah, in the I, Roche. Played, I played college baseball for about two and a half years, and I got hurt. Uh, while I was playing, I tore my uh, uh, ligament in my wrist, so I ah. couldn't like swing a baseball bat or no yeah, shit. yeah, tore it twice actually. Nice. And that, so I gave it a shot after I tore it the first time. Then I was like, I'm going to play again. And nine games into the, my junior season, I tore it again. So mm. that's when I was like, I can't do it anymore. Ended the career. Yeah, do got an arm on you. We see it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after that, you obviously, what'd you go to college for? I went to college for, I switched my major like five times. Nice. So if anybody's out there, yeah. oh yeah. If anybody's out there, like, I don't know what to do. I didn't either. I figured out my junior year. I went for criminology at first, got to be in the class. And then I was, they were like, yeah, I wanted to be an FBI agent. I wanted to do like Homeland oh. security type stuff. That's when it was big. Um, and then they were like, Hey, you got to be a street cop first. And I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So I switched to accounting then to marketing, then back to accounting. And I was like, oh, man, accounting sucks. I hate it. So my my junior year came around, and I was adding up all my credits for the classes I took. And I was like, what can I do? Like, how can I graduate on time? Because I switched it so many fucking times. And uh, business was the way to go. So I did a generalized, like, athlete business. That's what I did. And I was like, I'm not dealing with any other stuff. And uh, – did a minor in marketing. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, like you mentioned, Pat, I actually roomed with uh, Zach. Pat's Zach, son. Pat's son, who's our, our leading sales guy. Yeah. Well, number three or four. In the company. Yeah, in the company. Yeah. But leading yeah. of the sales team. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty good at sales. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, then I went to college with Zach, and uh, when I got hurt, uh, we were roommates, and I was like, hey, man, like... Yeah, I need an internship. Like you needed an internship in college. I was like, "Hey, is there any way I can I can do it? Uh, like work work for, with you guys for like a summer?" I had no idea what supplements were. I've never took anything outside of a protein. I never took pre workouts. Nothing. Didn't even know what it was. You could tell me like, "Hey, these are BCAs. They do this." I'm like, "All right, cool. I don't know what the fuck that means." But, uh, but I need a job. Yeah. So I'm gonna sling because I had surgery. I had a cast up to here. I'm gonna sling. You know, I'm dumping pill bottles in the warehouse. It was my first ever job. No shit. Yep, I worked in a manufacturing uh, warehouse where we did other people's brands, and I dumped pill bottles. Yep. Nice. First so then from job. there, you didn't end up leaving to go get a real job. No, no. Um, I actually uh, had so many ideas for marketing because that's what I was passionate about, like building websites or making customers feel a certain way. And uh, then I went into marketing. Uh, I was the second marketing person in that company because it was still a small company with, like, I yeah. don't know, 15 employees. Mm-hmm. And uh, and from there, I I built websites. I, that's how I learned to do graph design. I learned more things doing the job than what I went to college for. So I was just going to say, so you all of a sudden transitioned out of uh, your major into dumping pill bottles into kind of your major, but not doing anything with software development. No. You no. had no experience in college with software development. No, my first software development was that job, and it was working on a WordPress website, which I had no fucking clue what I was doing. Mm. Yeah, I taught myself how to do it all. No shit. Yeah. So then from there, after that, you uh, what what happened from there at that place of work where because you left there? <clears throat> no, so with that place, we actually uh, merged with another company, uh-huh. and then from there, I was moved out of marketing. And I actually went into uh, contract manufacturing, business development. So I was the guy flavoring supplements. <laughs> the guy that doesn't take supplements I learned started how, flavoring supplements. I learned how to do that in five months. But <laughs> I, I had no experience with formulating or anything like that. So that's why I learned uh, all the ingredients. I learned how to mask certain ing- uh, ingredients. Which, which ones taste like shit. Which flavorings better for which type of ingredient. Exactly. Why we use citrus flavors for this and yep. why? Yeah. Yeah. So I bounced all around. Uh, I bounced around a lot at that company. So I went from marketing to contract manufacturing. I was then my last position there um, was uh, receiving. I received raw ingredients off of eighteen wheelers. <laughs> How'd you yeah. move in the logistics? 
Because they needed somebody they, or because uh, you wanted to? No, I didn't want to. Um, they didn't need me in, uh, in contract manufacturing You're being anymore. so nice about this right now, I know. Shane. I, I got to be nice. Company, you this company, you fucking hated working I for hated this working piece there. of shit place. Yeah. Treated like dog dick. Yeah. You were fucked over and moved around and taken out of things from one to another. Yeah. So You're being so nice. All right, I'll be mean for a second. Don't. You, people hate you then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be mean. <laughs> well, they moved me out of marketing uh when we merged with them because I, I was younger yeah. and I brought a lot of ideas to the table and they didn't like that. Who knows why? I have no, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they were like, Hey, where, where can we stuff them? So they stuffed me and yeah, they put me in contract manufacturing. <laughs> You're I was using a, so many sexual innuendos right now. I was where can we put it at? I was getting stuffed. <laughs> I was getting stuffed. I was getting turnover and oh, I was fucked. But, uh, yeah. So I would just, I would do anything I could at that job to leave. Like I would, Take two hour lunches. So you started like being coming a disgruntled employee that yeah. hated working somewhere. Yeah, because I wasn't doing anything I liked to do. Where I was, I was in a position where I liked to do, and then they moved me because they didn't see me as a fit there. I guess they didn't see you as a value. Yeah, uh-huh. correct. And I was well, I was twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, you were young. Yeah, so I didn't know much. Um, no. But uh, yeah, so I was trying to do anything to leave, besides actually taking the step and leaving my own. Yeah. So I got moved from position to position. Typical disgruntled employee. Yeah. I'm going to take a two-hour lunch and see if they fire me. <laughs> they didn't. It doesn't work. I tried many times. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, my last position there was receiving ingredients. And then uh, finally I had enough. I was two weeks into that position change, and I was like, I'm just going to fucking leave. And I walked out of the building. So, And uh, you were pretty pissed off then, I was, huh? I was mad. Yeah. yeah. So then from there you yep. left and then you went you went and got a job with Perfect Shaker. With Perfect Shaker, yep. <clears throat> and then uh you were what did you do for them? Um I was an event manager, so I traveled uh <laughs> everywhere <laughs> and I was, I was like a traveling salesman, I think. I would stand at you were, you were an event manager. <laughs> yeah, I was at the Arnold, I was at uh LA Fit Expo, Orlando. So Fit, what what like, what were you doing as uh, as this what, what, an event planner? At, Event manager, manager, planner, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like I, uh, fucking J Lo and wedding yeah. planner, huh? So I would coordinate all the products to get to the show or the expo on a pallet, and then I'd fly in, go to the expo. I'd set up the booth, so set up the table, make sure all the products are good, and then I'd work the expo for a couple of days. Stood there, talked, traveled to all over the world. Uh, n- only the country. Oh, only in yep. here. Yeah. Okay. So I've been to I don't know Phoenix, Portland, L.A. Yeah, all over the everywhere. Place. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. you got shit canned there because they overstaffed and lost their ass. Yeah, they overstaffed and uh, and had a shitty deal going on. Which is understandable. That happens very common in all industries. Exactly. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. So um, so from there, yeah. you were at Perfect Shaker and then that so was... So while I was... Yeah, that was, 20, that was 2018, I think. So right about the time you got started at Axe and Sledge. And uh, around that same time, I think it was in... Uh, it was the Olympia of um, 20, it was 2018, uh-huh. the Olympia. Yeah. Um, so I was, in February of that year of 2018, I was in contact with Pat and Mike, because um, I knew Pat and we were talking, and I would, did videos. I taught myself how to do videos. They weren't good. We've established as many times. Yes. Um, but Pat was like, hey, we need someone to come in and film some athletes. And I was like, cool, I'll, I'll make, try to make time, whatever. Ended up not working out. Next time I saw you guys was at the airport in Vegas. For the Olympia, we were leaving. Yeah, right after we started Axe and Sledge, we were to 2018. We started in June, yeah. so this is September of 2018. September 2018. I remember seeing you there. I didn't like you then either. Yeah, I didn't know you. <laughs> you didn't even know who I <laughs> no, was, I and I was like big time at that point. Exactly. I I, I'm, I lived <laughs> under a fucking rock, but I'm I saw with you. I saw Pat and Mike, and I was like, hey, like, good to see you guys. Then you come up, and I'm like, hey, I didn't, Shane, nice to meet you. And, and I remember. Yeah. And you were so pissed off. I will never forget this moment. You were so fucking mad because the Steelers were playing and there was no Wi Fi on the airplane. Oh, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, you were so mad. I believe it. You were walking around trying to fucking find a pillow because you were like, I'm just going to go to sleep. It was so funny. <laughs> you moody bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we went back. And uh, then in November 2018, just two months later, is mm-hmm. when uh, I actually got let go from Perfect Shaker. Mm-hmm. And I hit Pat up. I said, Hey, you guys, you still have an. Uh, part-time video whatever and, and uh he goes i actually got a job for you so yeah started right away and yeah and you started out at this company yep as a dude just we needed somebody to to assist jay in filming yep 
And like, whenever it came, you're like, yeah, I could do this. And we looked at videos and I'm like, these things are fucking horrible. They were bad. Who did you hire and what the fuck does this dude do? I was like, I don't even like the way he looks. I walked out of the conference room after my interview and, and you looked at me and you were like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is 2018. We were fucking. We were limiting everything that we had to make sure this company operated. But we knew we needed people. Yep. And uh, and I remember Bob being like, "Hey, dude, you, you got to give him a break, dude. You, you, mm -hmm. We need him. We need him." And I'm like, "All right, fuck it." And uh, but it's so all of that occurred within the past what six years? Yeah, yeah. seven years. Yeah. So in this past seven years, you have worked into the position and you started out filming shit. And then we realized that you are pretty intelligent. And like we took, we, 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 I guess like the other companies, we took you out of filming. Yeah. But I would say we, <laughs> Jay's like, yeah, he's fucking terrible. <laughs> you can Very run bad. a camera. We know yeah. we, you I can, can. I can, I know an idea in my head. I'm like, hey, it should look like this, but to do it. Ah, now man. you know my struggles in life. Yeah. But to be able, we, we removed you from there uh, just because your value is in the development of the company on the back end. Mm -hmm. So something that you had nothing to do with in school, and you ended up coming to a company to take a chance after you lost, after you, you got let go at a company, um, and came here for something that you had no idea really what you were doing, but you knew you needed to do it and need to do some fucking work. And then we put you into a position where you are now an integral part of this company from a back end standpoint on software development. Yep. It's kind of crazy. Bro, you didn't go to school for software development. No, I didn't no go to school, business didn't for, any go of school for any of the stuff I did. So <clears throat> I find it, I wanted people to hear this to understand who you are and what you do because for anybody that is like, what do I do with my life and how do I do things? Bro, you were just, you know, what the fuck you were doing? No. Nope. You just tried to graduate college just to graduate on that time because that's what people do. Yep. You graduate on time. Don't take longer than you need. Yep. So you graduated on time. I did. And then... That really didn't do anything good for you. No. But it did do good things for you because you just were able to work. Mm -hmm. So every position you did, you just worked until you really hated it and then took two-hour lunches. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then left and got into something else. But being here, like at this company, we recognize people for what they are very good at. Mm -hmm. And we are not afraid to put people in positions. Like you said, you have ideas. When you have an idea, you bring it to us and we talk about it. Yep. That's the benefit of of working here because we were a band of misfits that all kind of fucked up a bunch, figured out what we really like to do mm -hmm. and have a pretty insane work environment. Yep. Um, I mean, that's just being, and that's what, that would be my advice for someone like, Hey, if, if you don't know what to do, you got to be a self starter. Like you need, you need to bring the ideas. You need to try to find your own path. Like you, I know we talk about all the time about, Hey, if you're not happy with your situation, change it. I changed. I left. I quit. Yeah. And whether, whether you want to think of it as quitting or just moving on, like how well, I it, look at it is I just tried to. No, you quit and said, fuck it. I'm yeah. not doing this shit anymore because it sucks dick. Yep. It's not good for me. Yep. At the end of the day, you have to do what's good for yourself. Yep. And whenever we're at a place like this, it, what's good for you is good for the company because we all know what it's like for things to suck. Yeah. We know what it's like for shit to suck. So, and if you don't like something, you have to change it. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, you got to yeah. make yourself happy. Yeah, you have to. I, I never was the one. I always thought like, hey, I want I want to go to work. I want to actually I want to enjoy what I do. I don't want to wake up one day and be like, oh, I, I've I don't want to go to work today. I, I want to go. I want to stay home sick. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I want to do that. I've never once felt that while working here. I've been here for two two years. Yeah, almost two and a half. I don't know. Yeah, two and a half. Two like and a half. That. Yeah, never once. Yeah, and and you went from two and a half. You went from being like uh, from being a sh really shitty videographer to becoming like, I don't even like just, I don't know. Yeah. I just, you run all the marketing. You're head of marketing. You deal with everybody. Yeah. 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 I think that's what your, your, yeah, your my business title, card says. Yeah. My title is marketing director. Yeah. Wait, he has business cards. I don't have yeah. a business card. <laughs> <laughs> I have business cards that say fuck off on it and no number, no email, no nothing. <laughs> just my name and fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people ask me like when i'm out like yeah. god you have business cards and i'm like yep you're not I, I don't want i don't want you to contact me dude yeah if i need you i'll just put my phone your number in my phone and then it'll, it'll be that they were supposed to debut with the arnold nate we just didn't i know we didn't go to the it. arnold nope couldn't no, go couldn't go and then this year's new arnold but um no i think it's i think it's fascinating because people need to understand what we do here it's like jay went to school to be a weatherman yeah he did jay's now a pilot 
and one hell of a video uh, uh, videographer, photographer, and editor. Yep. We went to school to be a weatherman. I didn't believe you guys at first when you said that. Oh, it's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Well, well, well so Jay, uh, Jay and Bob were originally the people that took all the pictures of uh, in videos for All American Roughneck. Mm -hmm. You know this fucking game we play here with these fucked up questions? After releases, after we'd film and take pictures of releases back in the day for AAR, we would be fucking at, at my old house and we'd either have a few drinks or get fucking stupid stoned, okay? And um, typically it'd be me and Bob that were high as a motherfucker. But anyway, every now and then Jay would dabble into it. But we would <laughs> fucking be ripped out of our minds just bullshitting about everything on the back porch or in the kitchen. And that's where it became like the topics of like the Himalayas. Because it's, you know, you're all tuned up and you're like just talking about anything. So Jay, being a weatherman, knows more about the weather, uh, weather cycles, patterns, everything. So he became like the person we'd ask, like science. J. Science J. And then he's a fucking pilot, got his pilot license. So, like, the whole thing came up there because he flies drones and you have to have a pilot license to fly drones in certain areas, all that shit. Yep. He doesn't actually fly planes. But we were really <laughs> fucked up the one night and we we're like, man, could you imagine, like, if we were on a plane, like, the plane all of a sudden, like, the pilots went down over the intercom, somebody needs to take over and take control of flying a plane to land it and this and that. And we're fucking going on this elaborate scheme. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, dude, I'm not flying that motherfucker. I'm Jay's flying that fucking thing. And Bob's like, oh, yeah, Jay, Jay all the way. And Jay's sitting there like, what? Jay's yeah, like, I guess so. I could take that what motherfucker. What am I going to do? Jay's yeah. like, does it, does it have a remote and joysticks? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, and Jay would, but I'm not wrong. We're not no, wrong. No. If there was anybody in this entire fucking building that I trust that has never flown a plane before to bring down a plane yep. safely, fucking Jay. 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 Landed on the Hudson, Jay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but it's uh, uh but that's like kind of where the game originated from was all the dumb shit cuz we were talking about the Himalayas the one. I'll never forget it. We I was I was higher than a motherfucker. We we'd sit out there for hours. Yeah. Just like hang just out and just bullshit. This. This. Yeah, podcast. this. Yes. And we were talking I was like, "Man, it's like climbing the Himalayas would be like a fucking or Mount Everest. Mount I'm Everest. like climbing Mount Everest would be a fucking big deal. Yeah. It's like I wonder how many people like die a year. A lot. A lot, dude. Mm. And then there was there were years where nobody made it to the fucking summit because like I go oh, avalanche. Two thousand fifteen, everyone died. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> everyone died. that attempted died. Died. And then they just shut the mountain down. Yeah. And then I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then we realized that, like, there's fucking, that you can't remove their feces, all the shit, the shit that they take, the garbage, yep. and then the dead bodies. Yeah. There's dead bodies all scattered all over the place up there. Fucking, we, we were mind melted at that point. And I was like, I'll never forget. I was like, holy fuck, I had no idea. Because, you know, like, it's a big deal climbing Mount Everest. It's a fucking, it's a bucket list for, like, lifetime climbers. Yeah. And then, but people die a lot. Yeah. I don't even know the percentage of you actually being able to make it, but like, like I remember they were talking about uh, the Nepalese. Is that who the or what do they go? What are the guys called? The tour guides? Uh, Sherpas. 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 Yeah. Sherpa fellas. Yeah. Fucking crazy. I, I don't it's know insane. if I could do that. Fuck no. I like hiking and everything, but I can't do that. No, that's not hiking. This is mountain climbing of the uh, of the <sighs> highest scale possible. Yeah. But um, no, it's. Uh, for you to be on here and how bad we bust your balls back there and people uh, n understanding what we do here at a company and how it all runs. Like, I'll say this. It's not easy. I, I was listening to Andy Frisella the other day. Like, when I when I work out now, I'm not so much listening to music, um, uh, especially when I do my cardio or my, or my high intensity. I'm listening to motivational stuff or things or, or just uh, life-enlightening intellectual talks. Um, and I was listening to Priscilla and he was talking about like the, the elites, the 2% on how they get there and people building businesses, not like the elites of mm -hmm. like the politicians and all that stuff, yeah. but from a business standpoint. And it's crazy because he said that, say there's a hundred people that start businesses, 30% of them make it out of just building the brand to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, then from there, 20, peop 20 of those people will drop out after facing some type of hard consequence. And I'm like, yeah, whenever you start hitting, hitting some brick walls and like 
you know, uh, you know, he used the example of like your store getting broken into, uh, losing a bunch of money in some way, making a bad deal, one of your family members dying or coming down with a terminal illness, all these things that life is all about. And then mm -hmm. from there, uh, eight of those people, eight of those 10 that were remaining would just get eaten up by the grind. It become the same monotonous thing over and over. Monday are the same. Tuesdays are the same. You're not evolving. You're not becoming better. You're not doing anything. You're just there, running a very successful company. And he was like, and he was saying that then the two percent of those people are the ones that continue to fucking evolve, that do not stop operating at a high level, that 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 continue to grow, that continue to visualize, continue to fucking conceptualize greater ideas and um and he was talking about how difficult it is to build these companies he's like dude them 30 people that built brands yeah they're bad motherfuckers they deserve respect and i'm like yeah because building a company is not easy building or building a brand is not easy something that people want to buy and continue to grow and i'm like that's very true because here we say the same thing there's companies out there in this industry that are beginning to grow and and they're like this is great say they're doing you know a couple hundred grand a month dude they have a fucking they have a business they're doing really well mm. or even that would be less than that people that are doing you know 100 grand a month something like that and they're building and it's great but now the next step is to scale that to double triple to go from doing 100 grand a month to two or 300 grand a month and then that's tough you're going to work through a lot of adversity um but in that time what has to occur internally to grow to that size is unreal. Yep. And then on top of that, we need to go from doing 250 to 500,000, then 500 to a million a month, then from a million to two, and then two to three to four. And getting to those levels is absolutely astronomically intense within a company. Yep. And, and when you're doing those type of numbers, like he stated, you have to continue to evolve. You have to continue to have ideas, listen to your people, and you not get eaten up by the grind and be able to see this. And with everything that's going on and all these different steps that we're taking as a brand, I look around and I'm like, to build what we have is insanely difficult because you need people operating at such a high level all the time. And those people have to be in good spirits, to think clear-headed, to think clearly at their job like your job sucks like i said i wouldn't want your job it doesn't mm -hmm. suck to you because of your value your job i don't know how the fuck you do what you do jay you sit there in front of a computer all day but like all of a sudden you can take something that is so centralized inside of a camera you're just seeing through a lens and then when people see it they're like fuck yeah and then on top of that the look of this bar the taste of this bar the ingredients of this bar the look People actually p picking it up and grabbing it, saying, fuck yeah, that's a cool label. And then they eat it and they realize it's the best bar in the industry. To operate at a high level in all those things is insane. And where do you go from here? What we look at it as we're just beginning. How do we double what we're doing right now? Motherfucker, it's going to happen. And it happens because of what we as a company create. And whenever I listened to that from him, I was like, it's, it's kind of crazy because he is... <laughs> this company does this company does hundreds of millions of dollars and whenever you see somebody like that and uh it's and hearing that because i i think very similar whenever he was saying it i'm like fuck yeah this is all true because we aren't stagnant here we continue to evolve we continue to grow we continue to listen to our people we continue to do this but that's not taking away how how great other people can be as well mm -hmm. you know other companies that aren't doing big numbers they're still doing numbers that are employing people that are paying taxes locally, state, federal, that are, uh, you know, being a big brand in this area is a big deal. We employ a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking at very big buildings, which is going to take up a lot of space. You know, the township likes to know who the fuck we are, wants to know what our story is. These are all things that are important in building a business. And whenever you're building a business in a company, it's not just selling one product. It's creating a culture. It's creating something that is bigger than just one person. Whenever we employ 38 people and we need more, by this time next year, I expect this company to have 65, 75 fucking employees, double in size. 
because of our growth and what we have planned and all of our aspirations. You guys know this. But whenever people wonder about like how things work of just that simple bar and let alone have SKUs, the, the number of products and number of flavors and numbers of ideas that, and, and things that are already put in a place that are happening, unreal. Because they all have to get designed. They all have to get purchased. They have to get designed, purchased, manufactured, and brought in, but the, the research and development that goes behind all that thing is insane. Yep, It is unreal, and if you don't have a culture of people that believe and think on the same <clears throat> level, you won't make it. No. You'll, I, fall, you'll fall flat at certain points, like he was saying, the 30% of people, and then the 20 of those 30 people, and then 10 of those 20, eight of those 10. <laughs> like, it's wild, the levels. And, and how we're continuing to break through those levels. Because he described it very well. Mm -hmm. I always equate it to, like, sports and teams. Yeah. Because we are a team, and, and you got to have people to buy in. If you don't have employees or, or teammates that buy in and, and focus on the mission, then you're going to fall flat on your face. You will. And, and you're right. And I think, that, um, I think that us having four owners, we're four equal partners. Mm-hmm at this company and then how we all have a very similar way of this company operating, all stay in our lanes, but also we know what it's like to work at shitty companies, have terrible bosses, have a really bad culture. That's why, like you said, from a team perspective, you can see when a team just fucking murders shit. And, um, but you know, you see when people have, the people that are murdering shit have a profound respect for the game itself. Like, dude, I, I know our company is, we have the best products in the industry. They're well-formulated, highest-end ingredients, phenomenal flavors, great labels. It's fun. It's intense. It looks, it looks awesome, but then on top of that, it's even better from a formulation and ingredient standpoint. We're setting the standard for many companies that are behind us on how to, on how to operate because we're showing you how to do it. Yep. Do it, motherfucker. Because there's a lot of shitty supplements out there that are digital marketing companies where they need better products like you guys have. So just pave, your, pave the path, reinvest into your company. I never thought I'd have millions of dollars and reinvest millions of dollars into a company. It's fucking insane. But at the same time, if you don't have ownership like we are, like uh, you will not be as successful. End of, end, end of the story. Yeah. Like I could take the money that we make and, I mean, fuck, it's insane. But I'm like... I kind of want an empire. I want to do great things because there's 38 families that depend on me. There's 38 families that depend on me to make the right decisions so that we have longevity and you and you and all the people here have careers to become even more intellectually enlightened, smarter, more valuable in life than you were yesterday mm -hmm. or the day before. So what the fuck does 10 Lamborghinis get me? Gets me 10 Lamborghinis. But to see someone such as yourselves and all the people here, people that were shipping, just shippers, become team managers, yeah. What we are doing here is making all that happen. That's the culture. We're promoting from within. And when we promote from within, that means that we have high expectations of you. We have high expectations of our people. And it's not meaning that, like, I think that... Too many people uh, are not valued enough because of um, ownerships not ownership not having the same vision. Ownership, whenever they, uh, you're not a number. Let's put it that way. Long yeah. and short of it, the people here aren't numbers. Mm -hmm. If we looked at people as numbers, it would run differently. Yep. We know everybody. Everybody has a nickname. A lot of them are offensive, and I shouldn't repeat out loud. HR would probably kill me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> that culture is why we are such a team. And whenever somebody was hired in shipping, making fourteen dollars an hour, and now is a is and now is a fucking team manager, running people, like they're in charge of people. That means their word is valued, yep. heavily. And uh, I think that it's pretty wild. And that's why whenever I was listening to him say that and just watching you and you and evolve into what we're becoming here, bro, it's, that's, what, that's how difficult it is to build a company. It's very difficult to build a company, let alone a successful growing company, because there's many ways to different run, a, run different companies. 
Some owners are fucking just, they look at you and they're, and, they're, and they're successful because people need jobs and people need those things. But like I said, I want to set a standard for how things should be done. I want to be fun. I want to, I'm going to fucking bust your balls, but I'm going to expect you to do your fucking job. Yep. But at the same time, if you need help, call me. Yeah. I'll tell you what to do. Might be wrong, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Might be like, hey, Seth, no, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Yeah. But no, those are, um, but yeah, I, 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 I think that what we have here is pretty incredible. And it goes and right into our next topic of, um, uh, like we were talking about athletes and people and everything. Uh, our athlete, Cody Law. You're big, you're big into fighting, too. I'm big into fighting. Uh, before we get into Cody and his fight, Cody has a fight on Friday. Everybody, it's going to be, we're fucking pumped. We're going to go through it all here. What was the, how'd you get into fighting? Like, you are a sports freak, but, like, fighting is your shit. Yeah. UFC, Bellator, the whole MMA game is, you're huge into it. Yeah, I know. Um, and you don't seem like a fighter, Shane. No, no. I had a good friend in high More school. More of a lover. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So well, I mean, already. with a big dick like you got, oh, it's hard. It. That's the other thing. So where'd the big dick come from? Is it like, do you think that it was like just God was like, bless your heart? Or is it like an inheritance thing from mom or dad? Um, might be genetics. Genetics, yeah. you think so? Well, maybe a little bit of both. Mixture. M mixture? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, that's a gift from God. <laughs> that's a gift. That's from a gift from God. <laughs> I don't think your dad was laying that kind of pipe. <laughs> Um, he might have. I don't know. I don't maybe, know. maybe, maybe. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Maybe that. you should ask your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom, where'd my big dick come from? <laughs> oh That'd be an uncomfortable conversation. It'd be awesome. We should film it. Oh, uh, anyway, the fighting. How'd you get into it? Um, I had a good buddy in uh, high school that was a wrestler, um, and he uh, he actually got me into fighting because we would be like just hanging out, and he'd be like, "Hey, you want to go to Buffalo Wild Wings?" There's there's a UFC on tonight and at the time. This is like, it's like five years ago, I think. I was like, I don't know, I don't know anything about UFC. I don't, I don't know. They were like, hey, it's like, it's like boxing, but more entertaining, I guess. So, because he's a wrestler, he likes the different styles you can do. So I was like, yeah, wh whatever, I'll go. So we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. I think the first fight I watched was uh, Jones Cormier. No shit. Yeah, it was the uh, it was the second fight. So maybe four years ago. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was like midnight or one o'clock in the morning. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings, and place just goes nuts because Jones knocked him out. Yeah. And I was like, that's when I became a John Jones fan. Oh my and god, it makes sense. That's when I was like, hey, it I'm all makes MMA. sense. Yep, that was my first. And then I, I got obsessed with it. Actually, I, I, I know. started research. I watched videos. I researched everything. You got into it. I you got became into a big it. fan. Yeah, I'm a really big fan. I'm not an analyst or a, or a successful better by any means. No, no but, you're not successful better at, at, by no, any means. No. Horrible, actually. Oh, uh, terrible. Just actually, don't do like five. below 50%, like don't take your advice or take the opposite of your advice. When I when I lay out all my picks for the card, I don't expect someone to do a whole fucking parlay. Like, hey, just pick a few fights here and there, yeah. maybe like two or three, not yeah. like the whole main whole card. Whole thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm just a big, big, big fight fan. fan. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, I mean, I am too. I love it. Mm -hmm. I am fascinated by it. Uh, just, it is, it's insane. It's yeah. very relatable to bodybuilding simply because, it, relatable except the fact that it's uh, objective, not subjective. Yeah. Uh, you definitely get punched and kicked in the face and mm -hmm. score points for such. The, the scoring system now is a little fucked, yeah. but you can still get choked out and lose because you're getting submitted or yeah. punched in the face and knocked out, kicked and mm -hmm. all that shit. Um, but... I've enjoyed it, and now that I've become more like I watch every single every single fight every weekend. I watch, um, but uh, we have an athlete here that's a local guy, Cody Law, who is. I mean, I don't even have all his accolades written down, but he, this motherfucker was yeah. a. Uh, he wrestled at Penn State, mm -hmm. and then transferred to UPJ, yep. which is University of Pitt Johnstown, another huge wrestling school. Yeah, known for wrestling. Became a national champion yep. wrestler. Mm -hmm. He won yep. nationals. He won nationals. And then from there, after he won nationals, he graduated and got into the fight game, MMA. Yep. And he has become an absolute fucking savage. Dude's an animal. It is scary. I mm -hmm. trained with him the one time. Surprised me because I was over there going to go through it all. And it was a little intense. But anyway, he became just immediately ingrained in MMA and everybody from the air was like fuck this kid's got the shit yeah wonderful guy hardcore you'd never think that he was actually a fucking animal no, sweetheart you, of a yeah, guy yeah he, nice as hell yeah but uh very scary 
but he got into it and he is a local guy from Johnstown, mm-hmm. trains out of a lot of the places in this area. Um, Ameris Taekwondo does the kickboxing. Yep. Then where's the place down in Pittsburgh? He does the uh, boxing. Southside boxing. Southside boxing. Yep. He does his boxing there. And then he's at the mat factory still doing wrestling and jujitsu mm-hmm. stuff. Then he's at the compound. And at the compound doing strength and conditioning. So yeah. this dude is ingrained into the local places that are all here in our area. We caught wind of him because uh, I think it was from Shane over at uh, the compound. Yep. Um, they carry our supplements and they have little kids. They run a great program. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And they were like, dude, this dude's a fucking animal. And we were like, I think it was you. It was like, yeah, we should sponsor him. Was it, was it oh, you so and Mike? Um, Mike told me about it because yeah. he, he caught wind of it. And he goes, hey, we got this MMA guy from here. And I was like, I'm all about it. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> We don't. We don't do it. We we don't have an MMA person. No, uh-uh. and and um, so you were talking to him. Obviously, mm-hmm. the big MMA fan. You were like, "Fuck yeah, into it." Little fanboying, but it's okay. I'm yeah. a fanboy of him now too. I can't say anything. But um, I think I had uh, to tell him that when I talked to him, I was like, "Hey, dude, I'm a big fan of fucking MMA." He's like, "Jesus Christ!" Yeah, he's like, "Not one of these." God damn it. Fuck. But um, he is. Uh, he's one two professional. He was a professional in MMA, and he's won two professional Bellator MMA fights. And he's undefeated as an amateur. Undefeated as an amateur. Yep. And he is undefeated as a professional. Yep. Going into his third Bellator fight on this Friday, April 9th. Mm. And uh, Bellator just signed a deal with Showtime. Yep. Uh, he's on the undercard. He is the last fight on the undercard. So he's the main event of the undercard. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be viewed on YouTube TV. Yep. Correct? Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, they're streaming it on their channel. Oh, they're streaming it on Bellator, streaming it on their channel. Yep. Jay, did you pull up Bellator's channel on on YouTube? Uh, we'll put the link in the bio mm-hmm. of this uh, YouTube video and of the uh, podcast. I kid everybody, you got to go watch it. This kid is the real fucking deal. It yeah. is. It's fucking wild. He, I think he finished both of his fights. Yes, he, he knocked fin- them both he, out. He knocked them both out. This dude is an absolute savage. Yep. I would consider myself to be, uh, I'm, I'm in decent shape, and like I love a challenge. I've always that's why I love bodybuilding. Loved it. Um, I went and trained with him at Philip Amaris, the Taekwondo place, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm hitting in the bags, and everybody's heard me say it. But this fucking dude, we're going back and forth, one minute rounds of hitting the bag, of hitting the pads, and then taking a break. His break, he's beating the fuck out of the 150 pound uh, fucking heavy bag. Like, not just hitting it, fucking beating the hell out of it, and then back to the pads. It was some of the most intense shit I've ever seen up close. So I have a new profound respect for all fighters. You all got fucking tons of screws loose not like one or two it's just like bodybuilding in the fact that people have screws loose like when you see a bodybuilder you're like oh fuck you push the limits every single way possible yep. from training and food and steroid use and cardio you push all those buttons at the same time as hard as you can that's like fighters it is strategic yet it is chaotic yep and this dude is of the he's of the up and comer we've signed him as an axe and sledge athlete he is watching him, like, kind of how he has changed, like, leading into this fight, like, from his hunky... Like, he's not hunky-dory, but he is a very well-spoken, very humble... Yeah, relaxed. Relaxed. Great, mm-hmm. great word. Yep. He's coming on the podcast, too. Yeah, Whenever he he's is. done this fucker, he's coming on. Yeah. Um, but he's such a nice guy. But mm-hmm. then watching him work, I was like, Jesus. We went with him on a light day to film... And he was he told us after he goes yeah that was a light day we were like what bro bro he's at he um he trains out of American Top Team down in Florida and I think it's in Boca I think it's where uh, yeah, I think it is Coconut Creek. Oh, Coconut Creek Coconut yeah, Creek yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't get to go train there unless you are of the upper echelon of the MMA world yep he was his sparring partner was Peter Yawn and he was, Dustin Poirier and he was just sparring with Dustin Poirier because Dustin Poirier is a southpaw. And that's who he's fighting. He's fighting a southpaw coming up. So you mean to tell me this fucking young kid is he? Peter Yon's team was like, yeah, we'd like you to spar with Peter, mm-hmm. leading into out. leading into his Sterling yep. uh, fight. I'm like, you're training with Peter fucking Yon. How's that going, bud? A little intense. And then he and then um, leading into this fight, he's sparring with Dustin Poirier. Yep. Bro, that's got to be wild. That's crazy. And you're not allowed to get starstruck. No. Nope. You're not allowed. You're supposed to be fucking fighting him. You're just in it. 
He just trained. He trained with Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like, dude, that's one of the biggest fighters you can you can be around. Those people at that place, like he's next to them all, sparring with them, and like for Peter Yon's team to be like, yeah, we want this kid right here. Peter Yon's a psychopath. Yeah, he's not right in the head. No, he's an animal. And I'm like, fuck, this is. I'm I'm just excited for him. I guess that's how some people were whenever I was up and coming and seeing. I was training with I trained with Cutler. I trained with fucking Kevin Lavroni and Phil Heath. And I'm like, yeah, it was wild. And yeah. then he, but I was like lifting weights with them. I wasn't punching and kicking them or getting my ass kicked. Yeah. And he's over there fucking rolling around with them and fucking trade exchanging blows with them. Yep. It's nuts. Yep. I never got into, uh, like, actually doing it, like karate or jiu-jitsu. I never uh-huh. did any of that stuff. I'm just a big fan of, like, watching other people do it. Well, I think, I mean, I think uh, it, Dana White said it really well when he was like, yeah, you can watch a football game, you can watch a baseball game, but if there's a fight that breaks out, all the attention goes to the fight. It's the oldest form of sport, and he's right. Yep. Because if you're at a football game and a fight breaks out, yeah, I'm watching no more fight. football. Everybody's watching a fight. Yeah, exactly. Same with the baseball. Yep. Bench is clear, you're like, Fuck yeah. yeah this, is awesome. this is awesome. Let's Hockey see games? Get. Fuck yeah. It's wild on how that occurs. Yeah. So um, on Friday night, on April 9th, uh, it will be on YouTube TV, on their, on Bellator's YouTube uh, channel. Is it on Bellator's YouTube channel? Bellator's YouTube channel live. You know better than I do. Yeah. He should be fighting around 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Around, so let's tell people to go there at I'd 8. I'd say at 8, yeah. Uh, you probably want to watch at 8. Or fuck it, just show up and watch the whole goddamn thing. Make a night yeah. of it. Put it on your phone, put it on your iPad, put it on the TV, just watch some fights. If you're not into watching fights, I suggest you do it just because it's fun. It is super entertaining. You're it just, is. you don't become aggressive from it. And yeah. trust me, everybody, you suck at fighting. <laughs> If you thought you were I get I love fighting. I love watching it. I'm like, I want to kick something. Yeah. And then I go do it. I'm like, bro, kicking like 30 times in a row might be the hardest cardio I've ever done. Yeah. I love it. I think I, I love hitting the bag now. Yeah. It is in the most intense cardio I've ever done, I think. I get more winded hitting the the bag and going through when you hitting pads than I ever have before. It's insane. That's nuts. It's fucking nuts. But anyway, put it on. Uh I'd probably say if it starts. If you think he's going on eight thirty, I'd say get there earlier. Yeah, I'd say get there at eight PM Eastern. Yeah, get there at eight. Watch everything. The kid is a phenomenal person. You guys do a wonderful job of supporting all the companies, supporting everything that we do. This kid is an up and comer. You're, I honestly believe that we're watching a uh, hundred and six. He's he fights at one forty five. One forty five. I think week. that we're watching somebody become something great. Because mm-hmm. everybody that we talk to about him is like, this is, this is the shit. Yep. This is somebody who has the goods, who's got the real shit. And being right from this fucking area is what's insane about yeah, it. Yeah, that's the cool part. Fuck yeah, dude. He trains the places 10 minutes away from here. Yep. 30 minutes away. Pittsburgh, Murraysville, fucking Lower Borough. Mm-hmm. All people that I know of, like the Matt Factory guys, like, bro, that was three minutes from my house, yep. my old house. The the guy that owns the mat factory, Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. So you get, did you meet Isaac? I did. Yep. Do you see him? Dude looks like, like normal. Hey. Yeah. Nice cool guy. Cool beans, super guy. One of the scariest people you'll see on a yeah, mat. He'll put you in a chokehold or break your arm. He'll eat you alive. Yeah. And then afterwards, shake your hand and love you and take you out to dinner and um, it's savages. Yep. It that's what is that's what's so fascinating to me about this the fight game and wrestling and jujitsu and all that. Most of these people are like the s- sweetest people, really good people, down to earth, humble. And then like you see them and you're like, "Whoa, dude, pump the fucking brakes! Mm-hmm. You're a little bit crazy. You got screws loose up there." Yeah, yeah. And they're smart. I'm like, "Jesus, fuck! Yeah. It's nuts." Yeah. But yeah, Isaac's the one that always got me because he look he's just such a presentable, nice. Nice man. Mm-hmm. Then the same thing over there. Shane over at fucking uh, at uh, the compound. compound. It's crazy. It's nuts. And then Philip. Yeah. Philip oh, Amaris. Yeah. <laughs> Philip Amaris is, looks. He's just your typical fucking. Again, very clean. I'd say he has a similar build to Jay. Maybe a little bit more weight on him than Jay, but has a very similar build. Glasses, facial looks hair. Very intelligent. Oh, I mean, he is very he is. intelligent. <laughs> yeah. But just looks like a. Like a scientist almost, yeah, you like, know? And you're like, and then like, awesome. Yeah. You're, and then you watch him kick the fucking bag and hit things and how fast he moves. And it's like, oh, dude, you're like 170 pounds and you just fucking rip shit. Yep. Watch him. 
uh, he's so he's getting ready. They're doing this big thing for um, the Murph Challenge. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they're getting ready for it. Their compound, Philip Ameris, uh, their Taekwondo place, uh, and uh, or the Mat Factory. They're all doing it. I think they have like some type of group thing going on, and he's training for it and he's putting it on the Instagram stories and stuff. I was like, and Hannah doesn't know who he is, and I was like, hey, dude, this is this is Philip Ameris. You gotta check him out. And uh, and she's like, oh. Like he's just he's taller guy looks like Jay and then he starts hitting the bag and she's like whoa whoa and I'm like yeah I was like this is the this fucking dude just beating the fuck out of a 150 pound heavy bag dude's a badass I understand why leg kicks hurt so much yeah I kind of want to get hit hard with a leg kick. you keep trying to kick me in the calf I want to no. I want to so bad I want to <laughs> fucking leg kick somebody so bad <laughs> I want to feel it but then I'm like and then you hear from everybody they're like no leg kicks. Like, they're ones that can – they say uh, – Cody was saying he's like, leg kicks cause damage for months. Yeah. Like, what what Poirier did to fucking McGregor, yep. it, he's not recovering in a week or two. Mm-mm. Months. He's like, your, your, your shit will go numb. It'll just – you'll wake up and it'll be numb still a month later. Yep. Is that not insane? That's the craziest. And then these guys are like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it again. I'm like, holy fuck. They're nuts. That's why I love it so much. I like all the different styles you can put together. Like Muay Thai versus, for, versus just a boxer or like a wrestler, like a national champion versus someone who's jiu-jitsu, a world champion. It's yes. Like, I love that. I think it's the coolest thing. That's why – and and the style matchups are so much fun. Yeah, because you don't know which is going to play stronger. Like like Adesanya, he's a, uh, he's a kickboxer. Yeah. Versing, versing uh, Paulo Costa, who I think was more of a uh, – more of a – I don't know if it was Muay Thai or just a boxer. Probably boxing and yeah. a little bit of wrestling. Yeah, He's not just, phenomenal at it. No, you just didn't know how it was going to play out. And it, it, there's so many factors that come into play. Similar to bodybuilding because they got to drop weight, they're weak, yet they've been training. For, mm-hmm. They've been an 8-week, 10-week, 12-week camp, whatever it may have been. There's all these things that go into one night. Yeah. And you go, and you both have game plans? Like, hey, I'm going to get him like this. But it turns out he's been working on that all camp. Yep. So, so you ain't doing that. And they're professionals. It's not like they're slumps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Yeah. It's I can't awesome. wait. Yep. Be on. We'll post all their stuff. We'll be posting about it on our stories, uh, on the page, everything getting ready. Make sure that you go support them. Make sure you show up on the YouTube channel. Um, we'll be posting it everywhere. Um, it does good for him also from a uh, content standpoint to show everybody that there is a giant support behind him. Uh uh, cheering them on because part of this game as well is being popular yep and we're gonna bring him on the podcast we got to yeah dude's cool shit yeah he's wild dude yeah yeah I'm excited. He, he's one of five kids four he's one of four i don't remember if he think has he's four brothers or not i think he has three brothers and one sister three brothers one sister or he's one of three i don't even i know. think there's four of them he has two brothers and a sister i think either way all the brothers wrestle they're all close in age I look at it, and I'm like, I, I, like the picture I saw of him and his family, I'm like, all those dudes look like they are just fucking, they're all clean cut, yep. great mom, takes care of them, sweet family, but they are all fucking savages. Do you imagine being one of three brothers that are all close in age beating the fuck out of each other? Probably just go in each other's room and beat the fuck out of each other. Oh, my God. Or pissing them all off at the same time <laughs> yeah. at a bar. Be yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, no! Go support him. We'll be posting about it. I'm, I love it. I'm excited. April 9th, 8 p.m. Yep, it's gonna be fun. YouTube, on the YouTube. And then he's going to. Or I, I want to see him fucking smash dude's face. Yeah, It'd be great. Good times. And then he's main card. Get on a main card. Showtime just did a big, big deal with Bellator. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. You can sign up free for 30 days. On on Showtime, yeah, yeah. Where's our plug, Showtime? I know, Give us Jesus. money for this. Yeah, YouTube. Cut that out, actually. How about how everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck them. <laughs> how about how everybody like the shadow banning that goes on? Yeah, bro. My stories they were back up in the fucking sixties and then the seventy thousands. Yep. I post something political, back down yep. to twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. That's nuts. On story yeah. views, it's crazy. And then I mean, we've been we've been fucking shadow banned on mm. on we, some social medias for a long time. We were just talking about that because we were trying to find people who follow you. Remember? Oh, yeah. That was wild. Yeah. We were trying to find people to follow Seth, uh, just just so, testing some stuff out. No, we were um, we were testing it out, and then we were looking for – because there was that uh, 
the dude that won this release, the AR oh, yeah, release yeah. we just had, mm-hmm. he won the entire release. Every single one of every single item yep. that was released, he won. Mm-hmm. So we were trying because we picked him at randomly through all the fucking ones that we had from our release in February. Yep. We went through all the people and we were just scrolling through them. And then we chose one. And then we were trying to look him up on my phone, like, because to follow me. We're like, oh, let's see if he has an Instagram. Let's find out who he is, how many orders he's had, the whole nine. He didn't follow me, quote unquote. No, we couldn't find him. We looked him up and we could not find him on my followers from Instagram. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. So we had his name down. I'm like, let's look for another person. That person that bought didn't follow me either. We did it for like 10 people. Yeah. Not one of the 10 people followed me quote unquote on instagram but then i'm like this is bullshit and i got all pissed off and i stomped off and i'm like looking into it and then you were in your office and then you came back and out and said no dude they do follow you you looked at them on from axe and sledge and aar on our, their instagram pages and see if they followed me they did yep instagram was just not allowing me to see anybody that actually follows me it's nuts it was insane yeah, they sh- they're sh- they shadow ban the fuck out of me. Yeah, it could be just it's I don't even it's unreal, crazy times. I know, nuts. That's weird. Yeah, it, I thought it was so strange. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's okay Whatever. though. We're good now. Whatever companies do well because of people and what we have as a support system, and uh, I mean I'm wearing a great shirt today. Shout out to Mike Shaw. Yep, kill all pedos. <laughs> I wore this to Emmy School the other day. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I did. Nice. nice. I feel like it's appropriate. It is appropriate. Yeah. If there was, uh, there's, there's two major things that I feel, yeah, we'll say two, three, that I feel very strongly about in the world with all the fucking bullshit that goes on. Number one, fucking pedos. I have no respect for pedophilia. I fucking hate it. I have no problem. You want to fuck with kids? I have no problem with hating you. Zero. Mm -mm. You want to be a little kid toucher? I'll touch you and break your fucking neck. I have no problem with that. I have no remorse for them. Zero. Mm -mm. Fucking hate them all. I think that this shirt is very appropriate. This is from Goon Goon Squad Tactical, Mike Shaw. He was on the podcast. Yep. Yeah, this is him. I love his hoodie. Yeah. I have a shirt that says it too. I wear the shirt and the hoodie together sometimes. So if I take it off, I still fucking hate them and think they all should die. <laughs> it's a very strong stance, though. I don't think yeah. that I... Uh, that's one thing that I have no wiggle room on. No and, wiggle and room. I feel like it's it, you shouldn't. Whenever you're fucking with little kids, <clears throat> the little kids are wonderful. They're so special. We built a god... We have a whole fucking gym dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. My dream is to have a whole entire giant community center. It's one of the reasons I work so goddamn hard is so that one day I'm able to have a whole entire community center that is a great place for kids and great place for the community and people that have does things like Shane does at the compound so that we have everything under one roof doing great things with other companies building wonderful shit for the youth of our community. I feel very strongly about kids. I love them. I think they're very special. Having a great upbringing and a place for kids to grow and evolve is what my is part of my life. Mm-hmm. I want an entire gymnastics facility. The fuck are you doing building a gymnastics facility, Seth? It's good for the kiddos. That's it. So I have no problem wearing this anywhere. The, the number two thing is liberty, freedom. Yeah, life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. Big on that. Yep. With everything going on in the world and all this bullshit that they talk about, how. Everything from fucking new vaccine passports, doing all that. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Freedom. I think that uh, uh, liberty, uh, freedom, and free from injustices and tyranny is a super important thing that we as Americans cannot forget. I think that everybody needs to keep that on the forefront. And I think that a lot of people are afraid to have these stances and believe in those things because they think we're offending people. Too many people get offended. Too many people have these weird feelings. We come from such wild pasts and how we continue to evolve as a culture and as a a society. 
um, like if you go from the city into the country, you right now in 2021, if you go into the city and see how um, savvy and uh, feelings oriented things are, okay, and then you leave and go to the country where I live, and you go work on a farm and you see the rud- rudimentary ways of life, like it's not clean, it's not easy. It's hard today in 2020, even with all the technology and machinery, farming is still difficult. Mm -hmm. Living in the country is a different way of life than in the city. Could you imagine a hundred years ago, the way of society and culture? We have so many, we have lights that just turn on at the flick of a switch. Bro, a hundred years ago, that's not how things operated the same way. Candles. Even 50 years ago, electricity wasn't the same way it is right now. Mm-hmm. Technology and what has happened in the past 100 years is insane. So imagine imagine 300 years ago. 300 years ago, how this country operated and how people in society today freak out over the way we have evolved as a culture. And people forget that we're still an evolving species yeah. and we have work to be done. And no politician, nobody out there, one person that recently was Barkley that said it, but nobody's like saying like, hey, we have a lot of these issues. We're going to continue to work on them. Like how are the people that are in the positions of power not speaking from a welcoming standpoint from both sides of the aisle? Yep. I say fuck both sides. I said, I think like Barkley said, I think most people, black, white, Asian, gay, straight. I think most people are good people. I think that we can do better as a society, Mm -hmm. but I think these fucking people up top fuck with everybody. The politicians love creating conflict, gaslighting and polarizing every subject to think it's about race, gender, anything like that. When essentially, it's not really. Most communities aren't based upon those things. There are rough communities and people do have adversity to face. Life has adversity to face in every way, shape, and form. You just have to be willing to do the work. Yep. It's crazy. It's nuts. Nuts. Yeah. But these, this one, super, super pumped about it. I like this sweatshirt. And then freedom. Mm -hmm. That's that thing where right now people are freaking out about what to do uh, with like the vaccine things to please people and all this. I can't believe that there's a pandemic that requires a marketing plan. Like we have marketing strategies here at this company. Yeah. As a company that does millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, um, we have to have plans on how to continue to strategize as a company, how we're going to market it to people, what we're going to do to sell it. And I would consider myself very savvy with marketing because the look of the company is one of my most important positions here. How we look and how we are perceived and how we are, how we connect with our people. And ours is very simple because it's just me. (laughs) Whatever you think and how your dumb head works, Seth, it's what a lot of people like. Because we're very raw, we're very open, we're very transparent with what we do and how we do things. Um, But companies, they use marketing plans how we're going to advertise it, what we're going to tell people. There is a marketing plan for what's going on. You mean to tell me we have a marketing plan for a pandemic and a vaccine. If it, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, everybody, if it was my opinion, if it was, I don't want to say real, but if it was more intense than it actually was, you wouldn't need a marketing plan. It would just be understood. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy right now. Crazy. I'm not getting that fucking vaccine. Not going to happen. Nuts. But, um, yeah, good times. So I like my sweatshirt. I like my companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pumped. I'm I'm glad that Barkley said that. And I, I think that, uh, 
I think a lot of people feel that way, and I think a lot of people are getting fed up with the bullshit. Yeah. I think they are. I think mm -hmm. it's time. Texas just had a stadium full of people, even though the MLB yeah, is the a bunch Rangers. of – Yeah, a bunch of balls, a bunch of ball-washing bastards, the MLB. Mm -hmm. But they Texas did open and say, fuck it, let's go. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see. Yeah. I'm pumped for them. I think yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. What's up, Jay? Nothing much. Just hanging out. So we have, uh, in honor of Bob, we have our ducking high game. Um, he's probably, right now, I'm going to guess that Bob is either uh, smoking weed, having a snack, or having sex of some sort right now. If or I was, running. If I was a betting man. No, running's done. He runs in the morning. Uh, yeah, this is his second wind. But either way, he's probably done all three by now. Yep. Or all four, including the running. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got some questions here. I uh, I think they're pretty good. I have two. Mm, this is a really good one. We got these mind fucks and everything. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You, you have more cards. So you're a big pizza fan too. I am. Shane's a foodie. If anybody wants to hit him up, Shane's a Pittsburgh foodie. Yep. Loves the pizza. This one's for you. All right. Describe the taste of pizza to someone who was born without taste buds. Oh man, these are high questions. So if I, if you had to, if if somebody was like they didn't know what it tasted like, never had pizza, and you had to explain it to them, this might be one of. I mean, describing any food's tough, but that pizza's is tough. a tough one. That is tough. Like plain cheese pizza. Like they don't even know what cheese tastes like. They don't know what tomato sauce tastes like. They don't know what. The dough, pie crust. It tastes like the best thing you never can taste. Yeah. <laughs> you know the best thing you ever felt. <laughs> that's how this tastes. Yeah, yeah. That's how it tastes. That's a good one. So what you're telling me is, is this pizza tastes like vagina. Yep. Man. <laughs> this pizza tastes like vagina feels. Or to a woman, how dick feels. Or like maybe if they're if they're lesbian or gay, how dick would taste or feel or yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're into is what it tastes like. Exactly. It tastes like sex. <laughs> yeah. There we it's go. That it's that good. This pizza fucks. Yep. <laughs> this pizza fucks <laughs> big time. Now I'd be a tough one. Even describing anything though, like uh, even texture wise, it's delicious. Yeah. Pizza might be one of the greatest foods. It ha I hate it because I can't eat a lot of it. Yeah, you got to you got to pick and choose. Yeah, you had Minios over the weekend, I did. huh? A lot of cheese on that one. Yeah, Minios covers it in yeah. cheese. Fuck me up. Yeah, so I that's what I took the advice of Portnoy because Portnoy went there when he came here. Yeah, and you actually have to let it sit for ten or fifteen minutes. Like the cheese is just there's so much, so and let it's it melted. Like solidify a little bit. Yeah, like if you if you stand there with the pizza. Uh, like right when it comes out of the oven, you can move the cheese around everywhere. Jesus. Like you pick up a slice, it falls off. Bro, there's no way I could ever eat that pizza. No, it was heavy. I could never eat that pizza. It was heavy. What's the other one people like? Uh, Furies. Yeah, f uh, Fiori's. Fiori's. Yeah, but supposed to be the best pizza in Pittsburgh. What, Fiori's? Yep. Yeah, a lot of, uh, my, the one dude who was a big foodie, I used to train with him back in the day, mm -hmm. loved Fiori's. I had it once and it was really, really good. Really? Is yeah. it cheesy too? Um, No. No? It's a, it's a little bit thinner. Saucy? Like, a little bit lighter. No, they put the pepperoni under the cheese, mm. I think. If I can That's a different right. move. Yeah. yeah. But not a lot of sauce, no. No? Um, See, no, Minios was, was a lot. I can't do the cheese because I'm lactose intolerant. I'd have to eat like fucking 25 lactate pills. Yeah. I'd be dumping them into my fucking we, mouth. We should make a digestive enzyme, but just put it on pizza. No. <laughs> no. Then it'll eat the fucking cheese before I get to eat the cheese. <laughs> I'll um, try a few other spots. Yeah. Huh. This is a good one. What do you got? You All go. Right. Mind fuck. What shape is the sky? Weatherman Jay over there. Jay? I got to think. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's, it's like It's, it's like flat. The, <laughs> yeah. It's like describing the just... I mean, it's pretty crazy that, you know, we take, a, we take for granted how wonderful everything is. Like, you know, like a blind person, a motherfucker. If I couldn't see, I would suck so bad. Yeah. There's so many things like all of our senses. Like, remember the... The, 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 the mind fuck question. The joke that got this all started, the question was, would you rather be blind or dickless? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, fucking blind? You ain't taking my penis? No. No way. But the thing is, is all of your senses. Like, we just said, 
what does pizza taste like? It tastes like sex. It tastes mm -hmm. like sex feels. You're like, well, fuck yeah, dude. I want to eat it. I love getting my dick sucked. I love being inside a vagina. It's great. And I'm like, you're me. That's going to be what this tastes like. But then the same thing goes from a visual perspective. Yep. What does the sky look like? Well, on a sunset over the beach, it looks like fucking sex feels. Yep. Like, whoa. That must look incredible. The senses that we have is, is fucking wild. Yeah. And I guess when you're pretty toasted up, like when you're high as a fucking kite, these things really fucking oh, yeah. blow your mind. I don't know what shape it is, a circle? <laughs> but it's not a circle up there. It's like maybe if we can't even look at it from a... I'm going to go ahead and just say it's flat. It's flat, huh? Yeah. It's, I don't think flat's it is. Not it a looks shape. three-dimensional to me. It's a sphere. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie Sphere with Dustin no, Hoffman? I haven't. Sharon Stone, nope. Samuel L. Jackson. I was a huge Samuel L. Jackson fan. I, I was like, too. Now I should watch it. Oh, it's a wild movie. Science. They go underwater. I like science stuff. Yeah, they go underwater. Did you ever see it? No. It's a great movie. Samuel saw, Jackson's the, in it. The core. No, the core suck compared to Sphere. <laughs> Sphere's <laughs> awesome. I remember, uh, like, that was back in the day when Samuel was make, pumping out, like, big movies. Yeah, yeah. The Negotiator. The Negotiator, you guys ever yeah. Negotiator? That's when Kevin oh. Spacey was fucking good. Or... Yeah, Kevin Spacey. He was still yeah, fucking yeah. little boys back then. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like, see? Fuck Again, him. fuck yeah. him. Yeah, I don't Can't like support him. him. Nope. Fuck that cocksucker. Piece of shit. Yeah. Kill him. Um, That's why I don't need a Subway anymore, actually. Yeah, I, no. I seriously haven't eaten Subway. I ain't eating fucking Subway. Nope. Nope. It's tough. Um, but yeah, Samuel L. Jackson, big fan. Yep. Big fan. Sphere. You should watch it. I will. Yeah. It's on the list. Um, <laughs> this is just a funny one, just to be an asshole. How far do bald people wash their faces? <laughs> <laughs> There's no line. It's funny because I'm going to be bald one day. <laughs> this is another Too one. Too far. Yeah, this is another one. Uh, why is it that feet smell and noses run? Oh, shit. Oh. Mm. Is it not funny? Like, play yeah. on words with everything. So my favorite one of all time. I, I'll never forget it. Um, I was watching Beavis and Butthead yeah. like back in the yep. day. And uh, they were like, and Beavis was like, why do they call it taking a shit? Whenever you're not really taking it anywhere, yeah. they should call it leaving a dump. Yep. <laughs> why do they call it taking a dump? <laughs> Whenever you're not taking it anywhere. I'm like, bro, that's a really good point. Yep. And mind well, fuck. My biggest one's parkway and highway and driveway. Oh, like yeah. Parkway and driveway. You park on the driveway, but drive on the parkway. Yep. It's mind weird. fuck. Yep. It's crazy. Like, who's in charge of this fucking know. shit? I was he know. stunned? <laughs> He's fucking with everybody. You think they like the driveway? Like the drive? It should be. It should be the drive. Driveway. Yep. You're taking a dump? No, I'm leaving a dump. Where are you? I'm, I'm, where are you taking it? In the toilet? Where are you taking? No, you're not taking it. You're leaving it. Oh, I will never understand that. Because if you said to somebody, "Oh, I'm going to leave a dump," what? No, I'm taking it. Yep. At least they got takeout right. Hey, I'm going to get takeout. Ah, good point. That's yeah. a solid one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know of any other ones off the top of my head. Uh -huh. I mean, I do. I <laughs> Like a blow job. <laughs> You're not really blowing. Getting, it's not blowing on it. <laughs> it's called a suck job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Play on words. I wonder, I wonder somebody's going to be like, hey, we just blow on it. <laughs> just blow on it. You're blowing my penis. It's great. I'm excited. <laughs> that is fucked up. It is funny. <laughs> wonder where that came from. Wonder where that originated. I don't know. Oh, man. Good Here, one. Good replace one. one word in a movie title with vagina. Ah, oh, I put this one on the internet. Did you? Uh, whenever I first got it, I put it out on the on the stories. Yeah. I was a little high. Um, and I was like, I was reading through them. And I started, and I was like, fuck yeah, this is what I'm posting. Yeah. Bro, there was hundreds of messages within minutes. Yeah. Like, bro, my DMs fucking... Bro, it went nuts. I thought of one right when I read it was lethal vagina. <laughs> yep, that was one of them. Yep. Yeah. Uh there was uh there was Mission Vagina, <laughs> Vagina Impossible. Um Captain Vagina. Yeah, Captain Vagina was in there. Uh Super Vagina. Oh yeah. Um Bro, there was a ton of them. I was fucking dying. Got some creative fans. Oh yeah. They it I um a vagina to remember. A walk to remember. Um, <laughs> um, 
Oh, there's probably hundreds of. Uh, there was people. There was people. The uh, there was just so many of them that were um, like romantic movies, uh, like Knights in Rodanthe, Knights yeah. in Vagina. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, the Iron Vagina. The Iron Vagina. Um, oh, bro, they were they were all over the place from fucking suspense mo- suspense movies, um, action movies, comedies. Like it was filled. I was fucking dying. I'm over there laughing, a little tuned up, and Hannah's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I just posted this. She's like, oh, Jesus. Good movie titles. Uh, these are just cool ones in general, too, here. Oh, here's one little technology to end it here. In 100 years, what do you think will replace the smartphone? Oh, man. Uh, Neuralink. You think that? I yep. was just going to say, I think it'll be yeah. the thing Elon Musk talks about in your head. Elon Musk is the man. Big fan. Like, are we even gonna have to talk out loud? No. So that was that was. I'll just text you from my head. Mm-hmm. And it'll show up in your brain somehow, like next to cyborgs. Yeah. Mind blown. Mind fuck. I don't know. Dude. Mind blown. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> blown my mind. It's exploding with information. Bro, I don't know, man. I think it'll be something like it. Yeah. The communication we won't we won't have anything. I think that's be where in our head. that's where technology is going. They want they want to f- try to figure out. Uh, well, at least Elon live on Mars and how can we live forever? I think that's the two things he's working for. It's, I don't know if because Neuralink is you're downloading your brain into a chip and then you live at least consciously for as long as you want. That's not cool. I don't even know how you would do that. I mean, I guess you wouldn't have. We have a population thing right now. We have a population problem in the world, and they're trying to kill us off in a way. Yeah. And you think making people live forever is a good idea? I don't know what's going on. It's weird things are happening. Definitely strange. Yeah. But I don't think that's a good thing to live forever. Like that movie, The Sixth Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good cloning idea people. Not. I think they can clone people. I they definitely can. They I did the they sheep can. in China. I thought. I think they can clone a fucking human being. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you definitely can. Like I think they're way further advanced than what regular society thinks about. Yep. Like, don't worry. These politicians are great, upstanding, wonderful people. Are you fucking with me? There's corruption at like local level, and if you think that these people on top in fucking federal government don't have like fucking crazy power trips you're out of your fucking mind yep. motherfucker people that are running the country are in their 70s yeah go see yeah. your grandpa or your grandma in her se- in her, his or her 70s and think that person is running the country yep that's what's occurring my dad's 63 he's 63 he needs to fucking be done and get the fuck out of the people's way it's too old you're done. You're yep. tired. You're pissed off. You hate the fucking world. Like, because you've worked for 50 fucking years. Time to be done. Where are the people that are, like, in their late 40s that have experienced a ton of life that are like, I'm, I know how shit works? Yeah. How are those people not the ones in power? It's because know. they don't want them to be in power. It's because these old fucking creepy cunts are the ones that are in power. You're 70. 70 70 year olds have a hard time going to the bathroom Mm -hmm. like ah my prostate's fucking killing me and these people are running the country no offense to older people but give me a fucking break dude I don't see me at 70 years old like like they 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 have trouble speaking yep but forming full sentences Mm -hmm. or driving (laughs) Dry- <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. big into that, by the way. That's one of my pet peeves. Once you're, I'm gonna get a ton of shit for this. Once you're 65, you need to take your driver's test over. Like I yearly. I com, com I completely agree. Because you're gonna lose your vision, and then you're not gonna. You're I completely gonna, you're gonna agree. Cause an accident. I completely agree. My grandma used to drive me to school when I was younger. She was like in her 60s, She's driving the middle of the road. I'm like, oh, grandma. <laughs> Get your eyes checked, please. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. No, you're right. I agree. I think I think that people should retake a driver's test at a certain age. Yeah, because you're you're getting older. There's parts of your body that are giving out. Yeah, that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's part of life. And not everybody wants to admit it. But Seventy 
plus year old people should not be running our country. No. Things have changed and evolved. Mm-hmm. And you mean to tell me that you're having trouble keeping your fucking teeth in your mouth when you're speaking to the entire fucking world? Are you fucking with me right now? It's crazy. Like, young, hungry businessmen in their late 40s. Like, like Pat. Pat's, what, 46? 46 years old? That mm-hmm. man has been around the block a few times, and he is fucking on top of his game right now. From a business perspective, yeah. And from a dad joke perspective. Yeah, from dad joke perspective. He's have undefeated. Trouble. Ha- ha- <laughs> Tough to beat that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. So, and I look at it, I'm in, my, I'm in my mid-30s. I'm 36 years old. When I'm in 10 years from now, I learn on a daily basis. And I'm like, in 10 years from now, where I will be personally, from a business perspective, fuck yeah. Like... Where's the young, younger, hungry people like that? Yep. They're in private sector. Yep. Building businesses. These fuckers are power trip hungry. They're making the country money. Fuck. Making themselves money. Man, that. I think they're all sacks of shit. All of them. Oh, I meant the people in their 40s. They're making the country oh, money. Yeah. Because they pay a lot of taxes. We pay a lot of taxes. Yeah. I hate taxes. Yeah. Hate them. I've hated them for a long time. Yeah. Taxation is theft. The li- big libertarian. Yeah. yeah. Conservatarian is what I would call myself. Mm. Yeah. Certain conservative views. Certain libertarian views. It's a blend of both. It's like one view combined from multiple views. <laughs> Dude, you, fucking mind blown again. Bro, you, are, you are catching on to this I feel like, so well. <sighs> yeah. It's almost like I think like two different people as one. Yeah from two different views to become one view that makes sense and is logical, rational, calculated. remove emotion, calculated. You look at the best way that could possibly occur to let people be free and think for themselves, but also stand for business, mm-hmm. to create jobs in your local community, to be wonderful, but also allow people to make money in their own ways rather than give it to people who are actually trying to fuck you over. Yep. Mm. I like that. I like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's like, Jesus Christ, just end this motherfucker. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Friday night, April 9th, 8 o'clock. Yep. Link is in the bio. Watch Cody Law beat the fuck out of his opponent. He's going to kick him in the face. Right in the dick. That's illegal. Oh, yeah. Leg kicks. Head kicks. Elbow to the face. Elbow to the face. You no knees el- on the ground. Nope. Oh, can't do that. Nope. Don't do that. No. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. 8 o'clock, Friday night, April 9th. Be there. Watch it. Support everything. Fucking A. Thank you.